the longest time. This was as close as I got to the cemetery grounds. This is Old Calvary, my old stomping ground. What kept me out? What kept me out was the fact that I don't really have any business here. I don't know anybody here, or I didn't know anybody here. But a correspondence with somebody who I never met what broke the ice for me. She was the one who told me that cemeteries were originally designated as dual purpose park, public space, and burial ground. And there was more of a community aspect to them. People would have gatherings here and families would have picnics around their deceased relatives' burial sites. But around the turn of the century, cemeteries became kind of ghettoized. And they started setting them up in undesirable or hard to access areas. It's a long story. But anyway, the point being that for months I just had too much anxiety associated with actually setting foot in a place like this. And this is all, all I saw at the place. strangest things that I can remember involving Calvary involved this this one night I, I had the TV on when I got an email from somebody who said she was making a documentary about Calvary or a documentary that might include Calvary and she wanted me to be in it or be a part of it so I responded I sent the email and looked over at the TV and for just one half second the image of Ray Liotta standing on this spot was on the TV and it was seriously it was not even a, a full second that he was on screen standing here it was a promo for a, I think a TV series that did, did a bunch of filming here uh, it was really quite strange because uh, Calvary doesn't show up a lot on TV or in movies it used to be The Godfather was like the one and only appearance I think but it's become a little more popular in recent years but that was just so strange like I'm having an email correspondence about Calvary Cemetery I look up at the TV and there's Calvary Cemetery for just one half second and if I'd looked away a half second later I would have, I would have not seen it just uh, weird at one point uh, this guy Patrick Sarsfield Gilmore was one of the most famous musicians in the world he had mega concerts at what used to be called Gilmore Garden or Gilmore's Garden. Today that's called Madison Square Garden. Not aware of any, any recordings that would have survived. I guess you never know, but... Um, a musician of the people, said the New York Times. <laughs> that reminds me, there's a, a... A guy sits out in front of the Public, near a public library on 42nd Street. He'll, um, for like five bucks, he'll draw a caricature of you or a cartoon or something like that. And his, he has a sign that says, I was, I was on the front page of the New York Times, and it's true, I looked it up. He, he made the front page of the Times once, but every time I see that, I think, yeah, so was I, pal. <laughs> so, so was I. Something I don't see too often up ahead is someone who looks like she's here just to be here. Just passing through. I sometimes see people jog or bike through here. But mostly this is a pretty pretty empty of visitors for the most part. It's an old cemetery, so what do you expect, right? Because I can't seem to get off the subject of 
people I knew who died. <laughs> uh, I came out here today to find a person who, as far as I know, is the only person I knew in life who was buried here at Old Calvary. I called the, the cemetery to get her coordinates and they told me and the um, <clears throat> the coordinates include the letter Q and she said Q as in Queen the woman at the cemetery said said that and I said well that's just perfect that she had Queen in her in her burial <laughs> location by the way the bar that I that I knew her from used to be called Gibney's there's a lot of, um, you could do a pub crawl out here. There's so many Irish names that are used for bars. But so she's somewhere in here. Lucy was awesome. Lucy was uh, everybody's best friend. She was 80 when she died. And she... Man, she could drink all of us under the table. <laughs> she really could. She was a professional. I said to the, I said to the, the woman at the cemetery that it's perfect that she had Queen in her location coordinates, and she laughed. She got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> There's Daly. That's another bar around here. Daly's Bar, which was actually opened by a former employee of the old Gibney's, which is now called Gilby's. I didn't mean to make this a, a bar tour at the, at the Boneyard, but... I decided to mute the audio of my comments from this part of the video because it comes a little too close to gossip. But more importantly, in the unlikely event that a certain somebody were to find this video and and hear about this, I'd be kicking up a hornet's nest of of shit. I don't I don't need that. Neither does anybody else. But suffice it to say, Lucy and I had a unique connection. But the fact that I'm deleting I'm muting the audio about it is not to be interpreted as scandalous. But we had a connection that I don't think anybody in our circles knew about. And I guess I should, I've decided to keep it that way. Audio will resume in a little bit. I, I wanted to keep the whole video intact just to keep the, the perspective of the quest to find the burial site, just to keep that perspective in, intact. Let's see, uh, see if I can figure out where the hell this is. <laughs> this actually illustrates why I charged people what I did to come out here and do this when I was a forensic genealogist. Sometimes it just takes a damn long time to find what you're looking for. And the orientation and the order of things isn't always obvious. I do hope she has a marker. As far as I know, like I said, she's the only person I knew who's buried here. My only other connection was a, another elderly guy, another elderly person who's said his ex-wife had a plot here, but 
that's not really relevant. There are a lot of unmarked graves here, but I don't think hers is going to be one of them. I'm getting there. I'm definitely in the right area. Now, I wasn't before. Is that it? No. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there she is. birth. I wonder why. They had it in the, uh, in the obituaries. <laughs> Lucy was awesome. Okay, so that was a relatively quick quick find but I was making those comments because sometimes it was, it was starting to feel like uh, I lost my bearings this is a this is an old not terribly active cemetery so it's not surprising I wouldn't know much of anybody here I mean, it's been sold. It was sold out for a long time, or so they said. But uh, cemetery, the cemetery business is pretty, pretty crafty about carving out new space. And now they have. Last I heard, they have no real shortage. But you're not allowed to do pre-need arrangements. Lucy obviously did, but that was a long time ago. Part of a scene from uh, Urban Cowboy was filmed here. The, the cemetery scene started out here and then moved out to way over on the other, other end of it. And there's the mighty Kosciuszko, the new Kosciuszko. Maybe not so new anymore. I was in St. Patrick's last week. I think I said something about the Dratty brothers and how they specialized in marble monuments. This is one of them. The Devlin marker is a product of the the Dratty brothers. This one is not as worn and unreadable as a lot of other marble marble monuments, but you can see where time has not been kind to to the sculptures. Seriously though, it's not as bad as I as I seemed to remember. Or maybe as I wanted to remember. You can read everything. Although here's an example of where it starts to get faded. But there are some others around here that are completely unreadable. This one really needs a needs a shower. see if the chapel's open.
it is not. The sign says they close it at two, but in the past, it was closed. They stayed open until three. Maybe it's just not open at all now on account of the COVID thing. They did. I remember they announced that they had closed it on account of COVID, but that's no longer on their on their website. There's another visitor. This, uh, this statue feels like it's, I mean, it's, it's like a centerpiece of this, this area, this part of the cemetery, but I never found anything on the person whose name is on here somewhere. Where is it anyway? It's just like these people with such prominent markers and magnificent mausoleums frequently have just like nothing on the public record like what did they do where was the name anyway I know I saw it hmm must be covered up by the by the bushes about it but the Alsop Cemetery is the only known Protestant cemetery contained within a Catholic cemetery and these are the oldest markers in the yard I think these go back to 1700s I think This sort of markers you find in Boston. Yeah, 1777. It's not the only cemetery within a cemetery, by the way. It's the only known Protestant cemetery within a Catholic cemetery. And the story is the Alsop family used to own this land, and they sold it to the diocese with the agreement that their, their little family cemetery would remain intact and it has remained intact my story with this place is that I woke up here once it was it was um, I came out here early I'd, bas I'd basically been up all night I um uh, hooked up with this woman I met at a bar and got almost no sleep but so I came out here it's a very long story actually but I was fueled by certain anxieties over the fact that my father had called the night before to go over his, his final plans so there were some might have been some changes to the to the trust to the estate and there really were no changes he was just calling to see if I was all right and if I was settled I didn't know what was going on but I, it was I, I came away from it with this kind of absurd feeling that he was excited about dying he was excited about putting the complicated mechanics of his 800 page living trust he was excited about putting all the all that into motion but it was the last time I ever talked to him he killed himself a week later but that night 
I knew something was up, but I guess I just didn't want to want to address it, didn't want to admit it that the end was near for him. And I came out here. I ran out here, actually. I just felt like I needed to be around the dead. I don't know. And I came up here and lay down on the ground. Fell asleep for I don't know how long. It was hot as hell. It was like, it was like early in the morning and everything, but it was like 90 degrees. That was quite a trip. I started texting friends from here, telling them I was dancing with the dead. <laughs> I was still a little drunk too. I, I took a, I, I drank one glass of wine from the woman's apartment before I left. The wine had been out all night. It was not good. Yeah, that was, that was quite a trippy, quite a trip. This is interesting, I'll have to look this up, but it looks like a solar panel. I wonder what the purpose is. I assume it lights something up at night. I saw another one of these, uh, but it was broken and thrown out. I have to look into this. standing once when I got an email from somebody asking if I could get a photo of a burial site for her and she had the, the name and the location coordinates and I quickly found it and sent it back to her right from here it's not it wasn't unusual for me to get those kind of requests back in the, when I was more active with this stuff but it was pretty surprising to get such a request while I was here and for a burial site that was probably like 20 feet away from where I was standing. <laughs> it was for an infant. And I corresponded with this, this woman a couple of times after. She said she ordered flowers from the florist across the street on Greenpoint Avenue. She ordered flowers to be placed at the site and she didn't, I don't think she asked explicitly, but it was implied that I, if I could go out and get a photo of those, those flowers, she'd really appreciate it. And that's what I did. This area is where everybody that was here on 9-11, this is the area where everybody gathered together to watch the towers, towers burn. You can't see the Trade Center now. Behind, it's behind those trees. But in memory of all that, first of all, they... On this date, 12 champion ash trees were planted near this site. These trees are a living memorial honoring the victims of the 9-11-01 World Trade Center attack. May these trees grow to maturity, giving hope and strength to all New Yorkers. Oh, they'll look better in the summer. <laughs> And this being the 9-11 uh, the spot, or close to it. Um, oh yeah, here they are. 
no wait that's not him there right this is where a number of firefighters who who died that day are buried there's John A. Chrissy and here's Michael J. L. Ferris and I thought there was another one And the back of this one is pretty cool. The back of the, the Chrissy one. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, here she is. <laughs> this took a while to find again. This is always hard for me to find this one. This is one of my favorite markers out here. I suspect this was higher up out of the ground at some point and it sunk a little bit, but I could be wrong. Vincenzo Soim, S O I M E, I think. Never found anything on him. It's a great marker, though. Like you can just see her starting to move. <laughs> it's like is she is she crawling to get out or is she trying to pull the stone down? Take your pick. I've shown this next one to a bunch of people. It always gets a laugh, but I've never figured out who these people were, but Morrissey Rocks. More, I mean, uh, Rocks used to be a pretty common Irish surname, but that's about all I was a ever able to dig up as far as any backstory on this one. But I'll assume this was an unintentional statement in honor of Morrissey. <laughs> That's at uh, 48, 190, 11, 12. So it's two burials, so that means this wasn't, somebody wasn't named Morrissey Rocks. It's somebody's last name Morrissey, someone else's last name Rocks. I have another favorite marker somewhere around here. Um, I think. I always get a little overwhelmed by section 48 and then it merges with section 52 I think I always think it's going to be easy to find the markers that I that I remember well, there's another Astoria pub name or part of it, half of it uh, Cronin and Phelan I think that's one of the oldest bars in New York they have prime rib <laughs> or at least they used to sites. I wonder if they're going to consider renaming this section again. Um, this had just been a numbered section, I think. It's the only section that's not a number. But now that it's been determined that this Pope was believed to be complicit in some sex abuse or knowledgeable of it, if they're going to get rid of this. Well, 
I'd like to stay longer, but it's getting a little late and battery life on this phone has really become a bore. It's a pretty good reason to to uh, get the next latest greatest because I've heard the the newer Samsung phones have awesome battery life. But video is a pretty pretty power hungry thing to be doing on these things. just getting a shot of this strange looking thing. Looks like it's actively tended to, so I don't think I don't think those eyes are there as a as a joke. Yeah, maybe I should just say no comment. And one more last thing. Every time I go past this one, I get the song stuck in my head for hours afterwards. Joe Howard was a guy who wrote, Hello, hello, my darling, hello, my baby, hello, my ragtime doll, or whatever it was. Hello, my baby, hello, my doll. I can't sing anymore, but I'm sure you know the song. around here. It's a very old, very old bus sign. The, the B-24 still stops here, but the B-29 was phased out a long time ago. This is right outside the front gate. 